Hey everyone, I'm Wendy McSwain. Welcome to a real life moment. It's just a short series that we've started here at Real Life Church to share with you a piece of advice or a conversation or maybe some inspiration. This morning I'm talking with Nick Grice, the Engage Director here at Real Life Church, and Nikia Dozier. We're going to talk a little bit about generosity and how that impacts our lives. So here we go. Good morning, Nikia. Good morning. Good morning. Nick, it's good to see you too. You too. <laughs> Let's see if he's going to be able to hear. Can you hear us, Nick? I got you. Good morning, okay. everybody. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. We're here. Okay. So, um, let's just talk about generosity. I thought we might want to start just kind of how we all met each other and, and how that came about. Nick, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the, it's a, it's a neat uh, thing. We, we've started our food pantry. Many of you may be aware. Um, we've always had a food pantry, but never on the scale that we're kind of promoting it to, um, since COVID started. So we decided to put the banners out. I think it was back in late March or early April. And just to kind of let the community know we were here to support them and help those in need any way we could. And we felt like the food pantry would be probably the most beneficial way we could um, help those in need. And uh, so we've been doing that, I guess, about five or six months. And uh, so it was really neat because Nakia um, drive by, was driving by and noticed our banners. And God just put it on her heart to reach out and contact us about how her business could get involved, um, Siemens off Old Plank. And um, so she kind of um, contacted Wendy and I, and we just kind of chatted and had a great conversation from the get-go about how Siemens could partner um, with our efforts and, and support us in, in reaching our community to help feed those who um, maybe don't have um, the access to food that those um, that are, uh, have jobs and hadn't lost work and um, maybe you're a little more stable financially have. So it was, it was an overwhelming blessing um, just to, to meet her and to hear her heart. And um, I'd love for her to share as well, just uh, kind of her perspective and, and what prompted her to stop in. Okay. <laughs> well, my coworker, Shel Bullwear and I, um, came into work one morning and we both had the same idea. We had seen the banners and she said, Nakia, I was thinking about going and doing food for the church. And I was like, I thought the same thing. And so we were both very excited that on the same morning, God had placed it on both of our hearts to give food um, back to the community. And we work here and we go out, we eat and we, some of us actually live in the community. So we wanted we, I'm sorry, being Siemens Energy, wanted to make sure that we gave back to the community that we're working in every day. So we went and talked to our plant manager, Mitchell Hurt, and he said, yeah, do a food bank drive. Yeah, sure, go ahead, have fun. Do whatever you have to do. So um, we came up with an idea and we decided to task our teams, our guys, with actually donating to the food bank. And we were so excited about it. And they just really responded, didn't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> in a yeah, we were we were just uh, um, amazed at the generosity that that came from your business, and really just overwhelmed at, at the. I wish we had a picture to show everybody. I think we have one, but I you know it. I don't know what the monetary amount was. It doesn't really matter. But like it was, I was in awe of. Um, of the generosity and I think like you mentioned once you made it a competition that's what really kind of got those guys going and got yeah. them motivated to get out there and uh and kind of compete with one another to to even bring in more which was really cool so right so we we tasked we have three different teams and we tasked the teams of hey this is the list of what they need we'll give point values to every item and the team that brings in the most will give you guys an ice cream sundae party the guys really didn't care about the ice cream sundae. It was more <laughs> of my team is going to win. And I just really didn't know they were going to jump as fast and do as much as they did. I think within a 48-hour period, we had collected $700. And wow. we had teams, um, we had three ladies, myself included, to go out and do the shopping. And so we went out and we bought just what as much as we can with what we had. Um, and 
you know, we try to maximize the purchases. So we're all like, this store has a sale and this store has a sale. If you go here, you can get this. So we just wanted to make sure that we had as much as we could to feed families because the overall thing was just feeding families. And I think the amazing part about it was even though it was a competition for my guys, they were more so worried about, I'm sorry, they were more so worried about just making sure families got fed. So I have guys from all over the country, all over the world actually. And so some of the guys who are new to the United States said, you guys do this? Like, this is what you do? You give food? And we said, yeah, this is what we're going to do. So they were really excited about it. I think I had one guy who um, is actually from North Carolina, from this area, from Bel um, Belmont. And he said he and his wife went shopping. He came in with six bags himself one day. Wow. And I just looked and went, wow, the generosity overwhelmed me. I, I was so proud of them. It's been amazing to see those bags that you brought in, which I saw the guys just coming and coming with food and bringing it in. And then in the last week or so, that food's all been going out. You know, oh, I mean, that, right. that's just, that's the cycle of what's really, to me, hit me about this, you know, something that we already had, but we did, you know, maybe it wasn't utilized the way that it has been in the last few months. So uh, I, I hope the guys know that already, that the food that they bought, you know, those six bags, they're already gone. And, and even right. our volunteers that we have on those days, I think that's really, um, I don't know, it's doing something in their lives too. So the whole process, Absolutely. I guess. Good. I'm, yeah, I'm that, so that's glad. That's a great point. It's, um, it's been really neat to kind of see, you know, like the people who have a heart to give mm -hmm. and, and just see them really respond. Um, and for some of those folks, it may be they've been in that position themselves at some point. So they know what it's like to not be able um, to go get food for their families. But for others, it's just, you know, your heart says, and, and it's kind of the stance our church as a whole took, like, we will not stand idly by and know that there's people out there struggling and who need food, and we're going to do something about it. We maybe can't feed everybody, but we're going to provide all that we can um, to at least meet the immediate needs around us, because um, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night, nor could probably either of you if you knew you were well fed and there was another family um, just a few miles away that, that didn't get to have supper that night or whatever. So, exactly. so it's just neat to see people's hearts respond that way. And, um, you know, it, it, it is when people give, they don't always understand the larger picture. And that's what I was sharing um, with your guard last night is, you know, you give food and you don't really get to meet face to face the recipient of that bag. Um, but we as the volunteer teams at the church do. So we get to pray with those families. Um, we get to chat with them and hear their life struggles and really just to get to invest in their life. So that bag of food is, is so much more than just feeding their bellies. It gives us a chance, a doorway and entry um, into what's going on in their life and gives us a chance to pray with them. Mm -hmm. We've had volunteers calling some of these um, people that have stopped by in the past and just following up with them and just checking in with them and saying how they're doing, you know, some of them, um, you know, it's like our pastor said, Hey, they're struggling, but life goes on too. You know, yeah. people have lost loved ones and they've, right. they've gone through surgeries and people have had cancer, um, and, and going through getting CAT scans. And we're praying that those tests come back, um, clear and cancer free and, um, you know, on and on there's marriages that are crumbling and we're praying for them and they're meeting with pastors and, so we get to see just a, a wide variety of different life issues that are taking place that we have the privilege and honor to come alongside those people um, and just minister to them in a way that helps meet just beyond their physical needs, but also address spiritual needs. And it most importantly gives us the opportunity to share the hope of Jesus through just a, a bag of food that, that may seem like to somebody that donated a can of vegetables, hey, it's not a big deal. I just gave some green beans. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> you have no idea the impact that'll have in, in, the, in the life of this person who receives it. So big or small, um, whatever, you know, your team contributed, it, it, it all blends into to a whole bigger picture and, and serves a greater purpose that lasts for eternity. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to emphasize um, mm -hmm. to all those people that contributed 
um, that that they just are part of something so much bigger than they can probably even imagine. So that's the neat neat part of it. Yeah, I think for for most people, like you said, you you don't know unless you've been there. And me personally, having been there as a single parent, not being able to keep a roof over the head for my son and I, or not being able to put food on the table, having the lights turned off, it hit a point in me as, as a person that even though I've passed that stage now in my life, I remember when. And it's a humbling mm. thing to not be able to be the mom or the dad or, or the man or the woman of the house and be able to meet a basic need for your household. So a can of soup, a 32 can of soup, 32 cent can of soup for somebody means oh, I just gave something out of my closet. But for somebody else, it's a meal for my kid yeah. who would have gone hungry. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, when we really sit and think about doing the work of God and really sitting and thinking about doing what he commanded us to do, we're supposed to take care of each other. We're supposed to love each other regardless. I'm sorry. We're supposed to <laughs> love each other regardless of anything and we're supposed to take care of each other. If you're a disciple of Christ, then you know his word mm -hmm. says, feed my sheep. It doesn't just mean yeah. with food, and it doesn't just mean give them money so that they can do. You have to take care of the, the totality of the man. You take care of his spirit, you take care of his emotions, and you feed him naturally. You know, that that's very important. Yes. And I think people need to really sit back and, and realize, especially now in COVID, you know, we at Siemens in, in the email, what I told my guys is we've been very, very blessed. Mm -hmm. We haven't missed a day of work. Right. You know, most of us right. still are paying our bills. Most of us are still employed. We, we are still moving and going and doing. We haven't been hit and impacted in, in the same manner as a lot of people. It is very important for us to realize how fortunate we are and so in that my guys were like you're right we are very very fortunate we're very very blessed so i think their answer to the call is what humanity is supposed to do That's right. they answered <laughs> well above what i thought mm -hmm. they were going to answer but they answered the call so naturally and so beautifully that they just wanted to make sure that people had basic needs and that's just what i loved about it you know i'm sorry no that's it wonderful touches. i just you know what I, I think that's the way the lord works i'm gonna cry too nikki here we go <laughs> i think that he uh he gives us opportunities to uh not to, not to prompt others not that we need to tell others what to do but he gives us opportunities to to ask right <laughs> put it out there uh, you know, you feel the Lord speak to your heart and you say, you know what, I, maybe I can do something about this. Right. And, it, and it just carries down. It's like your guys were just waiting for an opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just, I just love that because the Lord always multiplies what we, you know, our little efforts. He multiplies them. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. When we had a conversation, I thought we just need to capture this because I feel like uh, the Lord speaks. And, we, and if we can just listen, mm -hmm. um, so many other things down the line can happen. And I, I, and then, you know, I, we feel the blessings of that. I mean, I feel the blessings sitting here just listening of, of how the Lord's working and then seeing the people coming in and out every day. That's awesome. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, you guys get the other side of it, the blessing side of it to see, you know, we, we get to know, because we got your note, Nick. Thank you. It got sent out to our team. Um, and, you know, it's, oh, no. I, I would want to tell you guys, it's not just impacted Siemens here on Old Plank Road. What happened and what the team did has now gone out to Siemens worldwide. So it, it's, it's speaking to just a multitude of people. And so I'm really truly praying that wow. it multiplies not only within Siemens, but within the world, you know, hey, what can we do to help our fellow man? You know, because it's not about gimmicks and it's not about the name and it's not about marketing. At the end of the day, it's about kingdom business, you know? So I'm really, really praying that this multiplies and we can remember our purpose, 
being here on earth. I'm hoping we can remember our call to discipleship. I'm hoping we can remember and recall and then reenact on what we're supposed to be doing. You know, it starts small. Very good. Yeah, very <laughs> it starts with that can. It starts That's what, with care. You know, that one little, one little uh, caring point that we can do. Right. I, I think that's a great point, Nakia, and, and I think what you're talking about and the company has now seen it and it's impacted your employees. And, and what I always hope is as the church and as believers, we model what that is. Right. And then that people would kind of replicate that in their own, in their own, you know, sphere of influence, if you will, in their own neighborhoods, you know, now, hey, you've seen it on a local level where this church is doing it for the community. Now, hey, you can do that personally, individually in your own life for your neighbor, for your coworker, um, mm -hmm. for somebody that you associate with through hobbies or whatever. Like, be on the lookout for those needs, and and you know, as you do it, you know, hopefully they they're doing it as a follower of Christ. But if not, you know, we hope, we want to just share that hope with people because that's why we do what we do. Not only is do we recognize there's a humane need that we can meet, but we want to share that hope of Jesus with people. So being, having those spirit eyes to see that, it kind of, I think it makes people more alert to just their everyday surroundings. And, right. and then they can do that on their own. They don't have to wait for the church or Siemens to put together a project. You're just doing that in your day-to-day -day life. So, exactly. Um, I exactly. hope that's part of what it's accomplished anyway. Yeah, right. Well, that's fantastic. That's <laughs> I love it so much. I love seeing, you know, our just something small, you know, Nick, you're like, we're going to do this on when, what was it? Wednesdays and Saturdays. And then it, it grows to something bigger. So I'm thankful. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. To yeah. Do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been neat when, when we started, there wasn't, you know, a great, um, there's never been a, a long line, like people will come and they'll say, oh, I thought it was going to be, you know, an hour wait for the food. And I said, no, you know, we're, we're kind of, it's a steady flow in and out of there, which is, um, it's really been, been great because it's not just us throwing bags in people's cars and sending them on their way. Okay. It gives us an opportunity to stop and talk with them. Um, so we're not doing it on this massive scale, but it, it's almost like, you know, God said, I'm going to give you what you can manage. And as we first started, you know, there were, there were some days I would sit there for two hours and we'd maybe only have one or two people come by. But as the months have gone by, you know, it kind of spread through word of mouth and people were saying, Hey, you know, this church down here is wanting to help people. And so people started picking up bags and then say, Hey, my neighbor, you know, she doesn't have transportation. Can I pick a bag up for her? And we're like, absolutely. So we'll just throw an extra bag in their car and they're delivering it for them. Um, but it just kind of expanded and it felt like, you know, God's just kind of given us what we can manage. And, and as we're doing that with, with authenticity and with the pure motives, then he's just kind of honored that and, and not put more than we can manage. Um, but just kind of giving us the opportunities to really stop and take time to listen to those people and, and invest in them a little bit. Cause that's, I think people appreciate that almost as much as they do the food, just, Hey, here, listen to what I have going on in life mm -hmm. and just kind of, have that dialogue. So that's been the blessing of it as well. Yeah, it's, it's really important because in this right now in COVID, this pandemic, so many people are have anxiety and depression. And, you know, I say they're demons and spirits that come on to people and they, they're attacking people to try and tell them that they're not going to make it, that it's not going to end, that it won't, you know, you're not going to get through it. But the truth of the matter is this too shall pass. It will pass. You will make it. You will get through it. But all you have to do is hold on just a little bit longer. You know, I've always been told if you take one step, God can take three because the God that I trust doesn't know how to do math. You know, <laughs> you, you know, if, if I can have enough faith of a mustard seed, then he tells me over time, my faith will grow and it'll become a tree. How do you get a mustard seed into a tree? Come on, God. But that's his multiplication, you know, but I believe if people, you mm -hmm. know, what you guys are doing is so important because you're not just giving them food, you're giving them hope. And that is what I think in this day and age, most people need, they need hope. They need to know it's going to get better. You know? mm -hmm. I think that's, and they're not thing. alone. Right. Yes. 
Right. Right. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's very good. Anything else you wanted to share, either one of you this morning? No. I could talk all day. <laughs> no. We could. We could talk all day, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. We've really enjoyed getting to chat with Nakia and to hear her heart. And, um, you know, again, I just want to say thank you from on behalf of our church and our community um, that receives this food. We just want to say thank you for responding um, because a lot of times, you know, and, and I'm guilty of it too, of, you know, God will put something on my heart, but we're busy and, or you get distracted and, and, and you just kind of put it on the back burner and then it just never actually comes to fruition. So thank you for responding to and being obedient to what God prompted you on your heart to do. Uh, no problem. Thanks, I think Cheryl and I both just, it was so amazing how he just moved that one morning. She came in before I did. And as soon as I walked in, she said, hey. And I was like, yeah. So I, I love how he does things, you know, he because it was confirmation for both of us that it was the right thing to do. And so, you know, I, it, I was very, very blessed to have been used by him however he chooses, but specifically for this. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your hearts. Um, thank you for what you're doing in our community. It's making a difference. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us today on our real life moment. For more information about the Engage ministry here at Real Life Church, go to discoverreallife.net. Thank you, Nick and Nakia, for your time. And see you again soon.